Hello friends, welcome to my new YouTube video. This is Bruben here from Saija Fish Farms. As you know, I've been uh, running a high density fish farming using Bioflux system here in Kerala. And I've been posting several videos on, uh, regarding Bioflux fish farming. It's most, almost like a YouTube training program. But almost all my videos are in Malayalam, my regional language. And I've been getting a few requests from uh, farmers from other parts of India saying that, you know, uh, they, want, they want it in uh, English as well, so they can also understand that. So, uh, because of that only, I decided I, I'll make a video in, uh, in English as well. So, uh, what I'm planning to do is like, you know, um, I'm planning to uh, show you everything, like what I'm doing here in, at, at my farm. And also uh, give you a brief explain, um, not just brief, I'll give you an expl uh, explanation on Bioflux fish farming and uh, and how to do it. In fact, a detailed, pro pro proper detailed explanation of Bioflux fish farming and how we are uh, doing it in our farm. And the, uh, my intention is uh, is to make it like an online training program. Whereas you know, a new f beginner, uh, beginning uh, beginning beginner farmer who wants to enter into Bioflux fish farming can uh, go through these videos and you know. Uh, start uh, his or her farm by uh, uh, after watching these videos so hopefully uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you know these vi these videos will be helpful for you for uh, beginners who want to get into who want to get into uh, back of the One of the biggest problems in uh, high density fish farming, any high density fish farming for the matter, is the formation of ammonia. So, how does ammonia being is how, how is ammonia formed inside the fish tank? The uh, mainly um, ammonia is mainly formed uh, formed through unused or undigested protein feed. So, in in for fishes we give high protein rich feed, and um, and uh, and only fishes only digest around uh, twenty five percentage of the protein which protein which which we give. The 75% is uh, undigested and is gone back to the, back to the tank uh, uh, through SK, uh, through excreta. And this uh, protein has nitrogen inside it, and this nitrogen is the one which is causing ammonia formation. So this is one of the biggest problems in any high density fish farming. So, uh, in uh, there are different ways to ma uh, ha manage it. One is through uh, uh, water exchange, which is like you know unsustainable, um, especially when there is a uh, uh, water shortage and all that and there are other high density fish farming like you know uh, aquaponics where the water is being uh, you sent through uh, sent to uh, plants and these plants absorb the nitrogen in it and then there's other system recirculate aqua system aqua system where in like you know nitrifying battery and it's again sent to another uh, filtration system where in that the nitrifying battery as well uh, con uh, con uh, convert this uh, ammonia into uh, nitrite and then nitrate and then the purified water goes back inside the system so in bioflow system the pure, uh, water treatment is happening inside the inside the tank itself. there's no water exchange zero to minimal water exchange is happening in bioflow system how does it work in bioflow system we have bacteria good bacteria only uh, bacteria which is good for the uh, fishes these bacteria they'll convert the uh, nit nit uh, nitrogen inside ammonia into protein Basically, they use it for cell development, and these bacteria are highly protein rich. So, what does bioflog mean? Bio simply means living. Like we have biology, right? The science of living, living organ, living beings, science of living beings. So, bio simply means living, and flock means a group. So, bioflog simply means a group of living microorganisms. It contains bacteria, algae, cytoplankton, zooplankton, and all. Uh, we have mainly two different kinds of bioflow system. One is autotrophic dominant system, uh, which is dominated by algae, uh, which is slightly greenish in color. Uh, we have chem uh, under that we have chemoautotrophs and photoautotrophs, and then we, then we have heterotrophic system. Heterotrophic system is uh, more brownish in color. We, if you check out the water, we can see that it's more brownish in color, and also this system is more stable. Whereas autotrophic system is unstable mainly because there is high fluctuations in pH. As well as DO. DO means dissolved oxygen, which is which is the uh, uh, measurement of oxygen inside the tank. 
inside the water. I mean, uh, level of oxygen inside the water. So there is high fluctuations in uh, oxygen DO and as well as in pH in autotrophic autotrophic system. So like I said before, in autotrophs there are two kinds of autotrophs, right? There's chemo autotrophs and uh, photo autotrophs. Chemo autotrophs, what it does is, you know, uh, they will uh, convert the nitrogen inside ammonia into nitrite and then into nitrate using oxidation process. Photo autotrophs, these are uh, uh, for they use photosynthesis process and they absorb the nitrogen for their cell development during the uh, during the daytime. So these are uh, uh, this tank we can, we can say it's more greenish in color. It's autotrophic dominant system. And in the beginning stages, when you when you start the cultivation bioflow system, when you start the incubation field and all that, beginning stages it will be more greenish in color. That is okay, but we have to make sure that it it will uh, it will be slow. We have to make sure that it turn into heterotrophic dominant. Now, now if you check out the flow density, we can see that it's green, more greenish in color, right? So after uh, we should make sure that after some time, it uh, after a few weeks, we should we should change into uh, uh, brownish color. Uh, that is heterotrophic dominant system. How do we do that? One one way is through uh, uh, putting shade on top of the tank. Uh, that way, the direct sunlight won't uh, and uh, won't heat on the water, and thus uh, preventing further algae growth. This is the brownish in color. This flock is more brownish in color. And after a bit, it will get it will get more darker, darker, in, darker, darker brown. Now another way to uh, make sure that this it's more heterotrophic dominant is through maintaining CN ratio, that is carbon nitrogen ratio. So in uh, we need to figure out how how does the heterotrophic bacteria function. So these bacteria, uh, they'll absorb the nitrogen. Basically, they uh, for them the nitrogen inside the ammonia is their feed. And they also take in carbon as their feed uh, feed source. So uh, the carbon uh, we have to give additionally. So these bacteria, uh, when uh, when you give additional carbon or when there is carbon inside the water, uh, they lose that carbon and they will also absorb the nitrogen and for their and they do cell development. And these heterotrophic bacteria are highly protein rich, around 46% protein. protein. If you if it's a heterotrophic dominant uh, system. Uh, the uh, flow contains around 40 to 46 percentage uh, for protein source, and the microbial con uh, protein conversion also is also more high in heterotrophic system, which is around uh, 40 to 50 percent. Whereas for autotrophic system, it's only around uh, 10 to 14 percent. So there's a huge difference. That is another reason why we need to have heterotrophic dominant system because you know the fish, the fishes. Basically, what we need is uh, we need to save up, uh, we need to save the feed cost. One of the main cause for uh, fish farming is uh, feed expense. In bioflux system, along with managing the water uh, parameters, we are also making sure that uh, we are uh, recycling the feed. Uh, that way we are reducing the feed expense. Like I mentioned before, the ammonia is being converted back into protein, right? This protein acts like a uh, good uh, uh, protein-rich uh, feed source for fishes. And especially fish, uh, filter feeding fishes like tilapia and wanami and all that, uh, they'll they'll uh, they'll feed on this uh, flock. So that way we can reduce the uh, feed expense to a considerable amount. More than uh, for in tilapia's case is around 30 to 40 percentage. The FCR ratio for tilapia in normal system. The FCR ratio means feed conversion ratio, which simply means that you know to produce one kilogram of fish. Uh, how many kilograms of feed we need to give? So FCR ratio for tilapia is usually 2.2 uh, uh, or two within 1.7 to 2.2, 2.3. Whereas in uh, a bioflock system, the FCR ratio is reduced to uh, 1.1. And some people, for some people, it's uh, even uh, reduced to uh, uh, 0.8 or 0.9. So that way, that's uh, we can considerably reduce our feed expense. If you look at the fishes in uh, bioflux, if you catch them and look, uh, if you look at them, we can see that their uh, the tummy is always filled, their stomach, the gut is always full. That is because they are getting uh, feed 24. There's of always there's always feed inside the water. They are getting feed 24/7. They are always you are feeding on the flock. So the uh, the fishes that does grow are more tastier because they are getting more, more and more natural organic feed, and also they tend to be more healthier. And uh, they tend to have more immunity power and all that. The reason being, you know, these bioflow, the bacteria inside the bioflow system, they tend to be probiotic in nature. Pro means, you know, for biotic is not life. Pro life, you know, they tend to be more prob probiotic in nature. 
that thus preventing a lot of uh, diseases and uh, uh, helping increase their immunity power. To sum up this video, let's go through some of the major advantages of bioflow system. First thing being, it's very easy to manage the water parameters. As you know, in uh, high density fish farming, uh, there, there, uh, one of the biggest issues is ammonia formation. In bioflow system, it's very easy to control ammonia. We just need to add some carbon source. Regarding carbon source addition, we'll be doing a separate video explaining everything. Uh, so let's just wait for that video. Second major advantage is a reduction of feed expense. One of the ma major cost factors in aquaculture is feed expense. And in bioflow system, we can reduce that feed expense to a considerable uh, amount. Uh, in, in tilapia cultivation, more than 30 to 40 percentage of feed expense can be reduced. Lower FCR ratios and is, is the advantage of a bioflow system. Another advantage of bioflow system is uh, resistance to diseases. Uh, the fishes grown in bioflow system tend to be more immune. Uh, the immunity power of fishes uh, are increased considerably. Uh, this is due to the probiotic nature of bacteria in, inside the bioflow system. So, uh, compared to other high density fish farming, fungal infections and bacteria infections and all that are considerably lower in bioflow system. The fishes grown in bioflow system tend to have more faster growth. That is because of the high protein rich uh, flock which is available 24-7 uh, for, uh, for the fishes. They, these fishes are feeding on this flo flock thro uh, throughout the day. Another advantage is that you know these fishes uh, tend to be more tastier. Because the flock which they eat, they are natural feed, natural organic feed. So these fishes are uh, mainly feeding on the flock, natural organic feed. Thus, the fishes grown in bioflow system tend to, be, tend to be more tastier. I hope this video was informative for you guys. If you have any doubts or questions, you may comment in the comment box below. Or you may send me a WhatsApp text message in the number uh, given in the video. Just make sure that you don't send me voice messages. It will be difficult for me, to go, for me to go through all these voice messages and reply to them. So, please send me, as a, uh, send me a text message if you have any questions or doubts. I will reply to each and every one of them. Okay, then I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, in case if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please uh, subscribe the channel and also press the bell button so that you will get notifications when the uh, new videos are released. Okay, then you guys have a great day ahead. Take care.